Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Techniques and Tips, Learn Sample Preparation for Next Generation Sequencing. I am Marie Stone of LabRoots, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. Today's educational web seminar is presented by LabRoots and brought to you by Thermo Fisher Scientific. To learn more, visit thermofisher.com. We encourage you to participate today by submitting any questions you may have during the presentation. To do so, simply type them into the Ask a Question box and click Send. We'll answer as many questions as we have time for at the end of the presentation. You may also submit any technical issues here as well if you have trouble seeing or hearing the presentation. I'd like to now welcome our speakers. Delanka Jayawira, Manager, R&D, Molecular Biology, Thermo Fisher Scientific. Zuli Kelvikar, Scientist, R&D, Molecular Biology, Thermo Fisher Scientific. And Andrew Dix, Staff Scientist, R&D, Protein and Cell Analysis, Thermo Fisher Scientific. You may now begin your presentations. Hi, my name is Andrew Dix. I am a staff scientist with Thermo Fisher Scientific. And today it's my pleasure to talk to you about methods for DNA quantification, specifically for next-gen sequencing users. So regardless of what sequencing technology you're utilizing, whether that's adapter-based sequencing, massively parallel sequencing, or long-range sequencing, there are going to be a variety of quantification steps uh, in your workflow. And Having the highest, the highest quality quantification is going to only lead to better sequencing. So here today, I hope to talk to you about some tips and tricks to get the most out of that information to ultimately, ultimately lead to better sequencing data. For better or worse, unfortunately, there isn't a one size fits all approach to quantification. So I wanna highlight a few different technologies and their pros, some trade-offs, uh, starting with the nanodrop spectrophotometer, this is going to be UV-based detection, and it'll give you your broadest range of sensitivity. It will give you, it's a low throughput system, and it will give you results in under two minutes. And it also can nicely give you some purity information using an A260, A2, A280 ratio. Alternatively, on the other end of the spectrum, so that's really nice for, for high concentration samples. For low abundant samples, there's uh, qPCR. So qPCR is great for amplification, unfortunately, it requires known primers, so it will not work for every workflow, but it will, as it is based on fluorescence, it will give you that highest sensitivity and highest selectivity. What we find works best for most users is going to be the qubit, the qubit flex, or similarly the quantit uh, setups. These are going to, again, be based on fluorescence that will give you that highest sensitivity and selectivity. There are various options for throughput and can get you results between five and 10 minutes. These will also be sequence independent. So regardless of where you're at in your workflow, this is something that you can utilize. So a typical library prep as normalized here is going to be about 0 0.1 to 10 nanograms per microliter as far as sample concentration goes. And this is gonna be on shaded to the low end of the nanodrop spectrophotometer's detection range. So only about 30% of users or for samples are going to be able to get that quality information utilizing this approach. Again, on the alternative side for qPCR, if you're doing a low abundance sample, because you have this extra dilution step to get to your qPCR workflow, you can really nicely get those low abundance samples because you have that amplification. For most users, we find well over 80% of most users and their samples, the DNA high sensitivity assays are going to be right in that prime library uh, detection range and have the most overlap. And that's most of what I'll be talking to you about today is the DNA high sensitivity assay that is offered through the Qubit, Qubit Flex, and the Quantit Plate Reader systems. As I mentioned before, this is based on fluorescence to get that sensitivity and selectivity these assays will all detect, in this case, DNA, double-stranded DNA, in the presence of oligomers, nucleotides, 
proteins or anything else your master mix or your DNA isolation kit might throw at you. Each of those systems is predicated on a add, mix, read workflow that is designed to be user-friendly and e to have high ease of use. They will all start with preparing the working solution. So in the classic assay format, the users will combine a provided DMSO die stock solution with buffer to create the working solution. Our newly released 1x assay format for the want for the high sensitivity and broad range systems will streamline this process for you. And at that point, you will treat your DNA standards as well as your samples with the working solution you've, you've either been provided or you've created uh, to read on your instrument of choice, whether that's the qubit fluorometer for a more iterative throughput, the qubit flex fluorometer for a more medium throughput, or the quantit assay for a higher throughput. So I want to highlight a few onboard instrument features on the qubit flex perimeter that are built specifically towards next-gen sequencing users. First and foremost is the sample preparation calculator. We're well aware that most users are using only one and two microliters of sample, and this might augment the detection range. So here's a nice before you begin check to make sure your presumed sample range fits in with the detection range you're utilizing. The next screen is going to be a pictorial representation of where your sample concentration as determined fits into the dynamic range. On the left, you'll see the low end detection. So if your sample falls where that left red dot is, you might want to either consider using more sample if you have the ability to, or look towards an alternative method like PCR to get that extra sensitivity. On the flip side, on the right end, if you see that top right red dot, that's going to be that your sample is too high outside of the sensitivity range, and you might want to consider further dilution, or in this case, you're using a DNA high sensitivity assay, you might want to consider using a broad range assay. Some other downstream, so once you've done your concentration, some other nice features are the molarity calculator. So if you've done your, if you've, do, if you've determined your DNA length using an electrophoresis technique, like a tape station or a bioanalyzer, you can input that DNA length into this calculator and convert all of your concentrations into molarity. You can even go one step further with the normalization calculator for sample pooling, which will be common for your adapter-based sequencing technologies and approaches, and say, I want a final concentration of 5 millimolar in this case, and the system will determine the recipe for you, which is a really nice onboard check. Taking a step towards the higher throughput quantit assays. These are built for plate readers. Each of these kits is provided with a eight point standard curve solution. And that's highlighted here with the black dots on the main graph where the ideal concentration. So when the expected DNA concentration on the X axis matches perfectly the calculated DNA concentration on the Y axis. Any values typically, but in that space between your standard curve, so between your standard one and your standard eight, are generally going to be within 10% of expected and generally going to be very well behaved. What we find most users are frustrated by is what happens below that space, and that space not matching what they might have seen on a qubit ferometer or a qubit flex. And we find that a lot of those users are using linear regression, which is highlighted in the top right, and just by nature of this curve fitting model, it's not really focused on the low end, it's mostly focused on the high end, and you can get as much as 50% error highlighted in this graph here, where those sample measurements where n equals four are notably lower than your ideal line, which is that solid line that's shown. And we strongly recommend using background correction and ideally a quadratic model the background correction can be done by simply subtracting the blank from all of your samples and fixing your y-intercept to zero. Alternatively, you can set your y-intercept to the RFUs of your blank measurement. For example, if that's 23, you can set that to 23, and that'll tidy up your data at the low end and allow you to get really nicely within the expected concentration, so about 10% of what you'd expect and what you'd expect from a qubit fluorometer when you're measuring the same samples. 
For users that want to take it one step further, there's automation. So liquid handling, if this is compatible with 96 or 3D4 well plates, we've been able to show really nice data taking this using 40 microliters of a final volume in a 3D4 well plate. Uh, but please keep in mind, again, towards the tips and tricks, that if you're doing this, you're cutting that volume by a fifth. So going from 200 microliters to 40, you'll in turn need to take your dye concentration and multiply that by five to offset the change in volume. Similarly, if you were cutting your volume in half, you'd need to double your dye concentration. And when this is done, you'll be able to match that sensitivity and dynamic range that's expected and reported on the website. For users that want to go even further than liquid handling automation, there's the newly released Genexus purification system, which is an all-in-one uh, sample isolation and purification to quantification and sample pooling instrument. This is for true hands-free automation. And this is going to be powered by the qubit assay. So you'll get the same performance, selectivity, and confidence that you would have as if you were using a qubit instrument. More information for this, as well as other systems, can be found online through our website. And so with that, I want to recap. Uh, highlighted here on the left are going to be some, some of the high-level points that I'd really like to drive home. The, and also on the right is going to be sources for additional information, whether that's from our website, uh, links to customer support if you need to talk to someone directly, I also have highlighted a few key application notes that I think are really pertinent to this audience. The one I really want to highlight is how pipetting choice and volume can affect the results for your nucleic acid quantification. This is specifically interesting, in my opinion, for users that are working with two microliter volumes or less, because the choice in pipetting instrument can actually have a profound impact on your variance. And lastly, I just want to say thank you for your time. We know there are a lot of options when doing DNA quantification. We're here to help. Please reach out if you need anything else, again, through the channels that were listed before. And I hope this helps. Happy sequencing. Thank you so much. This is Zuili Kelwekar. Today, I'm very excited to present to you high throughput nucleic acid extraction solutions for downstream genomic applications that are offered by Thermo Fisher Scientific. Recent development in nucleic acid extraction procedures using diverse sample type has opened the possibilities of using various kinds of body fluids in research applications. Currently, for cancer and other disease genome analysis, there is a need for high throughput, rapid, and accurate nucleic acid extraction techniques. The Applied Biosystems magnet, uh, Magnetic Bead-based technology along with Kingfisher instrument can help provide accurate and reliable nucleic acid isolations that can be used in many downstream applications like qPCR for disease detection, uh, genotyping to identify genetic disorder, ancestry prediction, prediction and many other diseases. Here, we are focusing on four main areas. The first one is tips and tricks for efficient sample collection techniques. Second one is uh, semi to fully atom automated Kingfisher instrument for a nucleic acid extraction. Third one is applied uh, magnetic bead-based technology for nucleic acid purification. And the last one is downstream genomic application using MagMax kit and Kingfisher instrument. In this presentation, I will be covering several tips and tricks for efficient sample collection techniques. First one is utilizing stabilized saliva over raw saliva to improve downstream sequencing performance. Second one is using non-invasive sample type like saliva that can produce concordant results same as gold standard invasive and sensitive sample type. Third one is for liquid biopsy applications, the plasma quality, purity, and concentration are crucial factors. Hemolyzed blood sample can negatively impact the downstream sequencing applications. And last one is uh, I will be explaining high quality of DNA, RNA can be obtained from either fresh frozen or FFPE samples. 
below uh, is general um, workflow for sample to answer using magmax kit and ion torrent ngs workflow it includes sample collection using Thermo Fisher sample processing devices followed by sample digestion and bid based nucleic acid isolation using Magmax chemistry and Kingfisher instrument. For downstream sequencing applications, the template preparation and sequencing can be performed on ion torrent instrument and also on standalone Genexis sequencer. Finally, data can be uh, analyzed using ion reporter. To align with this sample to answer workflow, Thermo Fisher Scientific is offering several sample collection devices uh, like uh, Magmax purification kits and instrument, nucleic acid detection assays and dis uh, devices to determine quality of extracted nucleic acid and next generation ion torrent sequencing instruments and uh, as well as assays and some of them are listed here. Here are several instruments that are available in market for high to uh, so for low to high throughput sample processing techniques. The first one is Kingfisher Duo Prime, uh, which is standalone com compact bench top with low to medium throughput and can process six to twelve samples per run. Second one is Kingfisher Flex, which can process twenty four to ninety six samples per run and it is medium to high throughput. Kingfisher Apex is a modified version of Kingfisher Flex with added functionalities like UV sterilization, dual magnetic heat, uh, magnetic head, heating plate for 24 to 96 sample extraction, plate barcode reader, and user friendly GUI. The last one is Kingfisher Flex 2, which is bench top with integrated robotic liquid handler for high to ultra high throughput extractions. So here I will be uh, focusing on SARS-CoV-2 sequencing performance using raw and stabilized saliva samples. Match raw and stabilized saliva sample specimens were collected from 10 healthy human donors using Specimax saliva sample collection kit and spiked in with uh, inactivated BI control at 12,500 copies per ml. The extraction of SARS-CoV-2 RNA was done using Magmax Viral Pathogen 2 uh, Nucleic Acid Extraction Kit on Kingfisher instrument. The turnaround time from sample collection to nucleic acid extraction for 96 sample was around one hour. RT-PCR was performed using Thermo Fisher TACPAC chemistry on extracted RNA to confirm the presence of SARS-CoV-2. For downstream sequencing perform, uh, applications, libraries were constructed using ion amplisix SARS-CoV-2 inside research assay panel. Templates were prepared on ion shape and sequencing was performed ion gene studio S5 system. Finally, data was analyzed on ion reporter. The real length histogram reveals similar profiles across all contrived raw and stabilized saliva samples. Mean real length did not show any trend across all contrived raw as well as saliva, stabilized samples. However, the contrived saliva from stabilized uh, sorry, however, the contrived samples from stabilized saliva showed cleaner histogram as compared to raw samples. Here you will notice for donor 15, the, saliva, uh, the raw saliva histogram has a lot of byproducts as compared to stabilized specimen. So to at the end conclude, the stabilized saliva show better downstream performance as compared to raw saliva. Okay, so uh, currently several techniques and sample types are being used for nucleic acid extractions, including uh, lavage sample fluid, lava sample nasal swab, brush biopsies, nasopharyngeal swab, saliva, blood, etc. Of this, saliva has emerged as a promising sample type for diagnosis of infectious diseases and genetic applications as it is non-invasive sample collection technique. The applied biosystems Magmax DNA multi-sample ultra 2.0 kit can be used to extract nucleic acids containing genomic DNA from multiple sample types. The extraction can be automated by pairing the Magmax DNA kit with magnetic bead-based purification system. 
Here, whole blood buccal swab and saliva samples were collected from 25 male and 4 female donors, ranging in age range of 21 to 67 years. DNA extraction from whole blood and saliva were performed using 400 microliter sample input, whereas one buccal swab per donor was used. All DNA extractions were performed using MagMax DNA multi-sample Ultra 2.0 kit and on Kingfisher instrument. The sample to nucleic acid isolation turnaround time was around 1 over 30 minutes. The integrity and purity of extracted DNA were determined using nanodrop and qubit. For genotyping, all extractions were normalized to 5 nanogram per microliter and sequencing libraries were prepared with ion amplisix exon ready kit. Templates were prepared on ion shape and sequencing was performed on Gene Studio S5. And finally, the data was analyzed using ion reporter. In first graph, the TACMAN assay were used for genotyping of three SNP two of which are found to be uh, within the genes associated with drug metabolism. The gen genotyping percent call rate for heterozygous, which is represented in blue, homozygous allele 1, which is represented in orange, homozygous allele 2, which is represented in gray, were detected with three SNPs assays, were in concordance with each sample type. In the second graph, uh, it indicates the variant calling concordance, which is greater than 98% across all sequence sample types, and also within shared loci, which indicates consistent calling functionalities across all sample types. On average, less than 2% shared loci had one inconsistent variant, and less than 0.03% shared loci had three inconsistent variants between matched donor samples. To conclude that uh, at the end that uh, non-invasive sample type like saliva sample collection can be, can be uh, used to circumvent the more invasive sample collection technique like, like, bird, uh, sorry, like whole blood or buccal swab. Liquid biopsy is a less invasive companion to traditional tumor biopsies. As for next generation sequencing for circular cell free nucleic acid is becoming common, it is important to understand the impact of sample preparation on quality, specificity, and sensitivity of liquid biopsy. In this study, we explored the effect of suboptimal plasma and low library input on NGS applications. The K2 EDTA plasma was collected from four healthy donors, including one normal control and two hemolyzed samples. Nucleic acid isolation was performed on 4 ml plasma from each donor using MagMax cell-free total nucleic acid isolation kit. Yield and quality of isolated cell-free nucleic acid were assessed using a qubit as well as Agilent tape station. For library input concentration study, 5, 10, and 20 nanogram of nucleic acid input was used to prepare NGS library using ion amplistic cancer hotspot panel V2. Templates were prepared on ion shape and sequencing was performed on ion gene studio S5 system to compare NGS matrix including uh, read length, molecular coverage, and limit of detection. For hemolysis study, whole blood from three healthy donors were collected in K2 EDTA tubes. For normal conditions, tubes were spun down to separate plasma immediately. For moderate hemolysis condition, tubes were vortex until hemolysis was reached to 20 to 50 mg per deciliter. And for high hemolysis, tubes were vortex and, uh, until the hemolysis was uh, reached to 100 to 200 mg per deciliter. Cell-free nucleic acid isolation was performed using 4 ml of plasma. The histogram in figure A representing the read length for each library. As the library improved, decreases, the presence of small byproduct increases, which is around 0 to 50 base pairs. The Agilent tape station stresses in figure C indicate small byproducts and main amplicon peak, which, were, which are visible. Representative overlays for donor 1 for libraries generated using 5 nanogram, which is represented by red, 
10 nanogram which is represented by blue and 20 nanogram which is represented by green. For hemolysis study, NGS libraries were prepared using maximum volume input that is 10.4 microliter per sample. A graph A on the right indicates blue for normal, green for moderate uh, hemolysis and gray for high hemolysis. The median absolute pairwise difference quality control metric that is MAPD was higher for hemolyzed sample. The ion reporter QC threshold for MAPD which is less than 0.4 passed for all three donors for normal plasma. However, it failed for four out of six samples with, high, uh, with either moderate or high hemolysis. The MAPD metric is important for CNV, that is copy number variant variation detection, which indicate that in table P, the hemolyzed plasma may be negatively impact CNV detection. As the plasma is from all healthy donor, no variants are detected for any sample as per the table C. So to conclude at the end, the low sample input into NGS library reduces the mean read length and uh, the result and in it results in increase in byproduct also hemolysis negatively impacts ngs uniformity and also adversely affects cnv calling okay here i will talk about the quality purity and yield of nucleic acid uh, that we obtain from ffp uh, as well as from uh, which is in compare uh, which is comparable to their match fresh frozen counterpart here the nucleic acid extraction uh, extraction of nucleic acid from uh, fresh frozen uh, tissue as well as ffp is a critical step in routine workflow for many research lab however magmax ffp dna rna ultra kit using magnetic separation technique can help circumvent uh, by extracting both DNA as well as RNA from single section of tissue sample in single workflow. Quality, purity and integrity of extracted DNA and RNA were determined using nanodrop and qubit. For NGF applications, the libraries were constructed using ion amplistic cancer hotspot panel V2 followed by template preparation on ion shift. The sequencing was performed on ION Gene Studio SPI system and reports were analyzed on ION Reporter software. For this experiment, lung cancer and breast cancer samples were obtained from three different patients. All frozen tissues were kept at minus 80 degrees Celsius except during grossing and sectioning and immediately returned to minus 80 degrees Celsius when possible. One section from each tissue sample was saved uh, to serve as fresh frozen control sample and rest, uh, rest of the uh, tissues were fixed and embedded. As per DNA extraction graph, there was a comparable mean read length and high mapping percentage for both uh, sample types that is fresh frozen as well as FFP for both breast as well as lung cancer tissue. Also, on target, percent, uh, on target percentage were comparable with slightly better results for fresh frozen samples. On average, 95.5% of the sequences were on target for fresh and froze, uh, fresh frozen tissues and 91.7% for the FFP sample. The percent uniformity was also very, uh, very comparable across all sam uh, both sample types. As per uh, for the uh, RNA extraction graph, mean read length for FFP sample were slightly shorter than fresh frozen sample, but still it was above 110 base pair. The percent map was high, yielding comparable results of greater than 99% map. The percent valid read and percent read on target were high, yielding comparable results of greater than 99.5%. As per table E, the variant calling uh, the same hotspot mutations were called with similar frequencies. So at the end to conclude that using this work,
So nucleic acid from fresh frozen as well as FFP samples can be extracted with sufficient yield, purity, quantity uh, for many downstream genomic as well as transcriptomic uh, analysis. Here is the list of DNA extraction kit as well as RNA extraction kit, viral bacterial extraction kit, total nucleic acid and metagenomic extraction kits that are most commonly used by researchers. And for more information, please click on, the, on this kit. Please click on the click which is provided here. And at the end of this presentation, I would like to reference and acknowledge the author of these app notes, Lily Manley, Steve Roman, Zhao Ping Duan, Gabriel Vargas, uh, Charmin San Jose Hinahan, Hannah Saunders, Natalie Hernandez, Angie Cheng, Yogi Bodia, Thilanka Jayavira. And with this, thank you so much for your attention and I'm open to take any questions. Thank you everyone for joining today. I will introduce the Genexis purification system for sample preparation for NGS. Today I will give you an overview of the Genexis system, focusing on the Genexis purification system and its consumables. Next, I will show how to plan a run and load the deck and how the system uh, helps uh, in that process. Next, I will walk you through the FFPE, DNA and RNA purification workflow and cell-free DNA uh, purification workflows. The Iron Torrent Genexis system is a two-part instrument which contains the Genexis purification system and Genexis integrated sequencer. This is an automated workflow from sample to result, which controlled by one software, the Genexis software. However, these two instruments can be used as standalone instruments that are not connected to each other. The Genexis purification system can process different sample types such as FFPE lysates, plasma, blood, and blood-derived sample types, also uh, tissues and cells. So depending on number of samples and sample types process, the purification system can take up to five and a half hours for the completion of nucleic acid extraction and quantitation. As I mentioned, the Genexis purification system can be used as a standalone system, meaning that it is not connected to the sequencer and the nucleic acid that you get out of the purification system can be used for any downstream application, including NGS platforms other than Genexis. The Genexis purification system has a user interface uh, to plan the run in standalone uh, mode. And also you can monitor your runs through the screen. The instrument has a robotic arm with a pipette and magnetic rods for reagent transfers and magnetic bead collections and processing. The system has a vision system which will track the reagents and consumables for their correct loading and also expiration. The instrument has a UV light for forced run decontamination uh, to prevent any cross-contamination between runs. And after the runs, the quantitation results can be uh, downloaded along with the uh, run logs uh, through the USB port available on the instrument. The Genexis purification system uses the 
uh, a legacy uh, magmax uh, technology where a magnetic rod is used to collect the magnetic beads that are bound to the nucleic acid in order to prevent the contamination of the magnetic rod and also as apparatus for mixing we use these plastic consumable called tip combs the tip comb will cover the magnetic rod and once the magnetic rod covered by the tip comb is lowered to the solution that contains the magnetic beads that are bound to nucleic acid, those can be collected by magnetizing the magnetic rod. Next, you can move that collected magnetic beads to different wells by taking the magnetic rod out of the well and moving into a different well. And also, the magnetic rod can be moved away from the tip comb and that will release the magnetic beads that are bound to the nucleic acid. And then the tip comb can be moved up and down in the well to mix the uh, solutions in the well. So this is the concept used in the Genexis purification system uh, to process the samples to extract uh, nucleic acid. The Genexis purification system supports four different purification kits uh, to process different sample types. The FFPE DNA and RNA purification kit, the multi-sample DNA purification kit and total RNA purification kit supports 12 samples per run and each kit has four runs worth consumables to process 48 samples. The Genexis cell free uh, total nucleic acid kit supports six samples per run and has four runs worth consumables supporting 24 samples per kit. The FFPE purification kit uh, can process surgical resections, CNBs uh, that are core needle biopsy FNA, fine needle aspirates, and extract DNA and RNA sequentially or DNA and RNA uh, separately. The multi-sample DNA and total RNA kits can process multiple types of samples uh, to extract genomic DNA or total RNA. The Genexis cell-free nucleic acid purification kit uh, uh, processes uh, plasma from whole blood uh, to extract uh, total nucleic acid uh, from the sample. These different nucleic acid outputs can be used in downstream uh, NGS research assays depending on your need and applicability. The Genexis purification kits are used uh, in combination with the nucleic acid quantitation kit and the Genexis supplies kit. The Genexis nucleic acid quantitation kit contains the invitrogen qubit, DNA high sensitivity, or DNA broad range assays for DNA quantitation. And for RNA quantitation, it has the qubit RNA broad range assay reagents. And all your consumables that are pipette tips, the 4812 PCR plate for sample storage will be provided in the supplies kit. Now I will walk you through how to plan a run when the Genexis purification system is used in the standalone mode. So here you plan your run on the instrument using the user interface. Here is the home screen, and this is a touch screen. So to start, you uh, touch the run button, and that will prompt you to the all the planned runs in this instrument. 
So if you want to reuse one of these run plans, you simply select that and this button will turn into next and that then it will prompt you to start your uh, run uh, with deck loading. If you are creating a new run, you click on this add plan button and that will prompt you to give a run name of your choice. Once you do that, you go to the next screen and then you can select the purification kit uh, that you are planning to use. So depending on your sample type, you, you will use one of the four uh, extraction kits available. So once you select your kit, in this case, we, are, we have selected the cell-free total nucleic acid kit. And then within the kit, there can be multiple uh, protocols. For the cell-free DNA kit, there will be only one protocol. But if, for example, if you select the multi-sample DNA kit, there will be multiple protocols depending on your sample type. After that, it will prompt you to select the elution volume and automatically it will be selected the default elution volume that is recommended in the user guide. So if you want to, you can change this uh, volume uh, by using this drop down menu. And also you have the option to uh, do the quantitation after the purification uh, using this button. So if you select it, all the samples will be quantified on board. If you deselect it, samples will not be quantified and you will have to do it manually after the purification. Next, you can edit your sample information. So before editing, if you do not have six samples in this case for your run, you can deselect uh, the to match the number of samples you have. For example, if you have only four samples for your run, you can deselect the last two samples. And then also you can edit the sample ID uh, to match uh, your sample if you need more descriptive uh, name for your sample. Once you select your samples, then you will get a summary of the run plan that you just created. And if all the information are correct, you can go to the next. If not, you can go back to the edit button and edit the uh, information needed. So, so that was how you plan a run in the standalone uh, mode. If you are running the Genexus purification in the integrated mode with the integrated sequencer, then all of the things you did on the instrument, you are doing it on the Genexus software uh, in the, uh, the Iron Torrent server. So in this case, to plan a run, you can choose sample to result option and enter all the information that we just discussed uh, in this uh, run planning. So all this will be done on your computer uh, without going to the instrument. So once you plan the run, it will prompt you to load your consumables. Genexus purification system is designed to monitor all the uh, loading activities using the vision system. And also the consumables have been designed uh, to load in only one orientation and one location. So you, it's very hard to make a mistake with this system. So depending on the workflow and uh, the protocol, you will be asked to load either uh, one or multiple uh, 24 DPL plates and 96 DPL plates. Each of these consumables has their specific locations on the deck. 
And again, depending on the protocol, you will ask to load one or two tip boxes. And then if doing quantitation, the quantitation plate will be loaded in this location. And after loading these consumables, you have to close this latch to lock these consumables so they will be kept in place during the workflow. If the instrument is running standalone mode, all the nucleic acid will be end up in this 4812 archive plate, uh, PCR plate. If you are doing the run in integrated mode, depending on the, the sequencing assay, the amount required will be transferred from the 4812 archive plate to 96 well output plate and this 96 well output plate will be loaded onto the integrated sequencer as i mentioned before the vision system can identify the presence of foil foil seal on the plates and also it can detect incorrect consumables or expired consumables. This is due to the presence of barcodes in the consumables and the vision system can read them and identify if they are expired or if they are incorrect consumables. So here is an example. When it is guided to load these plates, we have purposefully loaded these two plates uh, with foil so you can see the instrument show that it is incorrect uh, by highlighting them in orange color and also at the end it will prompt you to correct the error with a message saying remove the foil from the from the plate so once you correct these errors if present, then the instrument will prompt you to start the run. Once the run is completed, the quantitation results can be obtained on the instrument user interface if it is a standalone run, and then this data can be exported to a USB and then downloaded. If the run is done on the integrated mode, then all the concentration data will be available on the, the torrent server and all the concentration values can be found in this uh, manner. And if any of the concentrations are below the, the assay requirement, it will be flagged as quantity not sufficient. So the user can decide whether to move forward or not, uh, depending on the need. Next, we will wo uh, walk through the FFE DNA RNA purification kit and the workflow. To extract uh, nucleic acid from FFE sample, uh, the FFPE blocks has to be pre-processed uh, to get a, a lysate. The FFPE samples come in uh, different uh, shapes and size of the blocks. And these can be either tumor resections, fine needle aspirates, or core needle biopsies. The first thing to do is to cut thin curls from these blocks. For that, we use the microtome. And then for the Genexis uh, system, we recommend using five to 10 micrometer curls. Once you have the curls, curls can be processed as is, or they can be mounted on slides. This is required if, if the samples has to be, uh, has to undergo histological staining uh, to get tissue and tumor contents. 
If not, they can be processed directly as a curl. To process curls or slides, the recommended method for the Genexis system is the uh, applied biosystems autolysis M tubes. This is a semi automated system, which I will discuss uh, further in the next slide. And if it is if using conventional methods such as uh, silin and citrosol method, uh, those can be uh, processed in uh, normal append of tubes. And after uh, deparaffinization, protein SK digestion, and decross linking, uh, these can be uh, used. The lysate can be used to extract uh, nucleic acid. The, the advantage of using the semi-automated, uh, the autolysis M tubes is that they do not require any organic solvent. This is important since uh, some countries are already restricting use of these uh, harsh organic solvent for processing FFE samples. So the autolysis tube, has two parts, outer and inner tube. The sample is the curls uh, or the scrapped curl from the slide will be added to the inner tube. And then the protein SK solution will be added to the tube. And that will be incubated at 60 degrees for one hour for deparaffinization and protein SK digestion, which happens simultaneously. Next, the tube will be put it put under 90 degrees for one hour for decross linking uh, after that the inner tube will be lift halfway and then the tube will be centrifuge to separate the lysate uh, from the paraffin the way it does in the autolysis tube is it has a filter and once you centrifuge, the lysate will go, come down to the the outer tube and the paraffin will stay with the filter. After you are done with that, the tube will be lifted all the way and the lysate can be collected from the uh, outer tube. So in order to do that, this process, you need some additional uh, items such as the autolysis tube rack, which uh, used to uh, centrifuge these uh, tubes, and then also the tube locking lid, which keeps the, uh, the inner tube in place during the centrifugation. And to lift these uh, tubes, either you can use pliers or uh, the autolysis tube lifter, which can lift multiple tubes at a time. So here is an overview of the whole process of extracting the DNA and RNA from uh, FFE samples. So the pre-processing is what I described. And once you have the lysate, you add the lysate to the plate one of the FFE DNA RNA purification kit. And also, you have to make a DNA's master mix using the reagents provided in the kit and add that uh, to the uh, plate two of the kit. And these two plates will be, then be loaded to the uh, purification system along with the consumables uh, to extract the DNA, DNA and RNA. So, we, we discuss about the pre-processing steps and what happens on board uh, is uh, highlighted in blue here. If, if extracting both DNA and RNA sequentially from the sample, the DNA is first going to bind with the beads uh, due to the preferential uh, binding nature in the buffer we are using. And then the the DNA will be uh, washed and eluted. The RNA will be retained in the supernatant and then it will be bound to new beads 
and washed and any remaining DNA will be digested with DNAs and the, uh, the cleaned RNA will be then rebound, washed and eluted to get RNA. So in the right, I am showing the, the fragment profiles of DNA and RNA from uh, FFPE samples. So as you can see, uh, you can see a nice intact fragments of FFPE and the intensity of the uh, signal increases with the uh, tissue input here. And that is true uh, for RNA as well in the bottom uh, bioanalyzer graph. Next, we will walk you, I will walk you through the cell-free total nucleic acid purification kit workflow. Isolating uh, cell-free nucleic acid uh, from plasma is a non-invasive method to detect biomarkers. However, it has its own challenges compared to other sample types. The major challenge is its low abundance. Because of the low abundance, we need large amount of uh, input uh, to extract sufficient amount of uh, cell-free uh, TNA. And the next challenge is the degradation uh, during the storage and the processing. So the expected amount of uh, CF TNA, um, you, as you can see, especially RNA is really low uh, from a from a sample. So these <clears throat> challenges also depends on a uh, few factors. Some of them can be uh, sample or donor dependent, such as health of the subject or the stage of the cancer, or if they are undergoing treatment, the status of the treatment. Those things we cannot really control. However, what we can control is the storage and sample processing. S storage is important, and especially when uh, selecting a tube type uh, to collect the whole blood, uh, it, uh, it can be a really important decision because some of the tubes, they do have preserva preservatives uh, to preserve either CFDNA or RNA or both. So that can help reduce the, uh, the degradation of uh, cell-free material. And the other important aspect is the time from collection to processing. This is really important and I will show an example in the next slide. And depending on how long you have to storage, store the samples, the storage temperature is also important. And then to get a meaningful amount of uh, CFTNA in good condition, the method of extraction, the quantitation, and also what type of analysis method you are using downstream is uh, really important. So when working with uh, cell-free TNA, so the blood collection tube, as I said, is really important. Uh, and also, if you are using a tube like K2EDTA, these samples have to be kept cold uh, at all times. And the other thing to avoid is freeze thaw. This is mainly to avoid the rupturing of the cells during these freeze thaw cycles and rupturing of these cells will lead to releasing of genomic DNA, which you do not need uh, in this type of extraction. And for long-term storage, we recommend storing samples at minus 80 C. And as I said before, the processing time from the collection is really important. So here is an example to show that how delayed processing can increase the amount of genomic DNA uh, over time, which can negatively affect the downstream application 
when using CFDNA. To separate plasma from whole blood, generally a two step centrifugation has to take place. First at 2000 G for 10 minutes at 4 C. Then the plasma is separated from the whole blood and undergo another centrifugation uh, to further separate any cell debris present in the plasma uh, at higher uh, speed. Here you can do either 16,000 G for 10 minutes or 6,000 G for 30 minutes. So once you have the plasma separated, uh, it's really easy to set up the uh, extraction run uh, using the Genexis uh, purification system where you only have to add the protein SK uh, solution to the sample and just mix it. And then add the, the binding buffer to the plate and then transfer your sample uh, to the same plate and load onto the instrument. Once you load onto the instrument, since we are processing large amount of sample up to eight milliliters of plasma in these runs, first it will bind to uh, the TNA and then wash it and elute in a larger volume of elution buffer to make it a efficient uh, elution without losing uh, the small amount of TNA present in the sample. Then the eluted TNA will be concentrated and then eluted again in a smaller volume, volume that is meaningful to use in a downstream application such as NGS. So in the right side, I'm showing two different profiles of CFT and extractions. And the one on the top is what we desire, where you only have the cell-free DNA and you do not have genomic DNA in this area. In the bottom graph is something that we do not want where you have a lot of contamination of D genomic DNA. So this can be due to any of those steps we uh, talked about before, uh, starting from sample collection up to the uh, extraction. So try to avoid uh, getting this type of results. For that, follow those steps we discussed. And so that will result in a good uh, extraction of cell-free uh, nucleic acid and that will lead to a better uh, results with the uh, downstream applications. So with that, uh, I would like to uh, conclude uh, this uh, presentation and uh, take any questions. Thank you, Lanka, Zuli, and Andrew for your informative presentations. We will now start the live Q&A portion of the webinar. Lillian Manley, Scientist, Molecular Biology, will be joining us for the Q&A. If you have a question you'd like to ask, please do so now. Just click on the Ask a Question box located on the far left of your screen. We'll answer as many of your questions as we have time for. So let's get started. Our first question is, uh, this was for Lillian, when would, when would you use a Genexus system over a Kingfisher instrument? Thank you so much for the question. It's actually a really good question and dependent on the workflow your lab chooses based off of its needs. So both Kingfisher and Genexus systems work really nicely with the MagMax chemistry. Both offer MagMax chemistries as a solution on their extraction technology and use a similar standardization. However, Genexus solution offers both a, pur a purification as well as a sequencer that can be split 
split apart and segmented. Um, with that, the user guide does specify very particular sample types and kit chemistries. So depending on your lab's needs, the benefit of utilizing a Genexis system would be to fully automate or standardize that process by basically supporting a walkaway solution from sample down to Genexis sequencer with the Genexis sequencer, so your sequencing output. We would choose a Kingfisher system if you needed to process a sample that maybe wasn't in the Genexis um, user guide, or you needed flexibility with sample throughput, dependent on your lab's needs, of course. So the Kingfisher systems that Zuli went over, so different throughput options, scaling from small to ultra high, and several different uh, sample types in kit chemistries, as she mentioned, as well as in her presentation, um, can be offered on the Kingfisher platform. Extracting samples on the Kingfisher platform can then be utilized with either the Ion Torrent platform using the S5 system or the Genexis sequencer. So essentially, you can use it in a segmented way to uh, work with the needs of your particular lab. Thank you. And we have time for one more question. This question is for Andrew. Um, just want to confirm the background subtraction trick for reconstructing the standard curve is simply subtracting the background readout, no sample, but only the dye from all the strand dilution readout. Hi, uh, sorry that wasn't clear at first. Uh, effectively, yes. So if you're doing a qubit workflow, you're effectively subtracting standard one, the standard one readout from all of your samples. And if you're doing the quantit workflow, I believe it's standard eight, which should be zero nanograms per microliter, and you're subtracting that from everything. So there should be no nucleic acid present. It'll just have the working solution at 200 microliters plus the 10 microliters of the buffered blank. Uh, and in general, that should be the same. That should be accurate for any of the DNA workflows and any of the RNA workflows. Thank you again. Great, thank you. And thank you again, Thalonka, Zuli, Andrew, and Lillian for your time today and wonderful presentations. We would also like to thank LabRoots and our sponsor, Thermo Fisher Scientific, for underwriting today's educational webcast. Before we go, I'd like to thank the audience for joining us today and for their interesting questions. Questions we did not have time for today and those submitted during the on-demand period will be addressed by the speakers via the contact information you provided at the time of registration. This webcast can be viewed on demand. LabRoots will alert you via email when it's available for replay. We encourage you to share that email with your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. Until next time, goodbye. <laughs>